Have you ever watched an educational video and then just completely zoned out? Well, that's me most of the time. Let's think about it this way. It's kind of like eating your vegetables all by themselves. It's pretty boring. So that's why when we first watched this YouTube video called, What Does It Mean To Be A Filipino? It immediately grabbed our attention. What does it mean to be Filipino? Is it our taste for strong, flavorful cuisine? Is it our obsession with playing basketball, even while wearing flip-flops? Or is it that strong sense of pride that we often feel when we see fellow Filipinos in the international spotlight? It was entertaining, easy to follow, and also very inspiring. It allowed them to explore and discover many different lands, one of them being the archipelago that would later become the Philippines. And here is the best part. This was actually an educational video. I was pretty much eating my veggies without even realizing it. Since there are over 170 unique Philippine languages. So of course it was an honor when they reached out to us for an interview, which we're going to be showing in full, so stay tuned. But first, here's a little context. Bonnie is the talented filmmaker. Hi, my name is Bonnie Logroño, and I'm the writer and director of the Filipino story. His wife, Mai, is the lovely producer and Cassie does the elegant voiceover. Now, we didn't get to meet Cassie, but Bonnie and Mai are super awesome and friendly. We're already learning so much from them, but really the best part is that we're becoming really good friends. Oh my God, that's awesome, dude. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> and you're next! <laughs> Anyways, they are releasing six animated episodes and they already put out three of them. In a nutshell, if you want to understand Filipino culture in an entertaining format, make sure to follow them. Even though they've only been around for three months, their social media accounts are already blowing up, especially their Instagram account. The way they tell stories is just so powerful. I went on that trip to the Philippines as an American, but I came back as a Filipino. I fell in love with the people, and I fell in love with a country that I never knew. But without further ado, here is our full interview from start to finish. Enjoy! Coming up. Meet a world-traveling American family, get to know their Filipino story, and find out why. This Mexican mom got emotional and began to cry. Hi, I'm Bonnie. I'm the writer and director of The Filipino Story. And I'm Cassie, the voice of The Filipino Story. So Cassie, I have a story that I want to share with you today. Okay. But first, I want to ask you, as a world traveler, right? Because you oh. <laughs> went to many parts of the world. You just came back from Amsterdam. You went to school in London. Yeah. And you went to Singapore together last year. Yeah. How many cities would you say you've been to your entire life? Huh. I'm not actually sure. So I have this app on my phone <laughs> that actually calculates like how many countries I've been to. And that's a, so far it's a total of 30. It's a humble start. 30 countries. Um, yeah, 30, I think it's okay. The cities, I'm not really sure because then mm. within the countries, there are like multiple cities. Just take a guess. How many would you say? Probably triple that. So it's like 30 times. 90. Yeah. Nice. Good enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ex excellent <laughs> math. <laughs> or, or more because then cities, like in the Philippines alone, there's yeah, some... Yeah. Okay, so times 10. Times 10, I don't so 300. Know. <laughs> okay, okay, well, well okay. let's just say 90. We'll say 90. All right, well, this family I'm about to show you has okay. traveled to over 100 cities around the world. Wow. And out of all the cities, they decided that they're gonna live here in the Philippines. Oh. So they're from America. They're called Mom Duty on YouTube. They're a traveling, travel vlog family. Oh, love And that. the dad is Filipino mm -hmm. and the mom is Mexican. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to show you their Filipino story as you know, a world traveler yourself. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, I didn't think that I would be considered a world traveler, but sure. So they're the Ocampo family, and nice. we're gonna watch it with them. With them? With who? The, the viewers. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot that viewers were a part of this. Great, so excited, let's do it. All right. I'm excited. Okay. I'm Nelvin Ocampo. I'm Nia Ocampo. I'm Nox Ocampo. And we're Theo Ocampo. And we're the Ocampo family. <laughs> well, I'm full-blooded Filipino. She is Mexican. So we're Mexipinos. Mexipinos. Yeah, it's special. <laughs> 
how many followers do you have right now? A little over a million. <laughs> Subscribe, <laughs> mom duty. <laughs> I was born in California, but I was adopted as a little girl. I was adopted into an American family, so I was brought up in an American home. And my adopted mother taught us everything about the American ways. And so I always felt like, you know, I'm not American enough and I'm not Mexican enough. And then you met a Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I really didn't have a sense of belonging until I met my husband, Nelvin. That's when I really got introduced to having a big family, that sense of community, people gathering and eating together. It was very overwhelming for me because I didn't really know what that felt like. I remember him inviting me to meet his mom and his aunts and cousins, and there were a lot of people. In a small space. <laughs> In a small space. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what's the celebration? What's going on? And they're like, no, there's no celebration. We're just hanging out with my cousins. It took me about 30 minutes just to say hi to his entire family. And I was like, what is this? It was overwhelming, super close. Their priority has always been just family first. And so I felt that right away. So I knew that every time we hung out, everybody was going to be there and it was going to be like a party. They were always so welcoming. These last 18 years, they've just always been so supportive, always asking questions. And I always thought, why do they want to know all this stuff? A lot of cheese. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I think it's just the way they are. Like, how are you doing? How was work? But me growing up in an American home, that's like, that's too much. Like, this is my bubble. I don't always have to tell what's going on. But to them, it's just like, yeah, let's all hang out together and get to know each other. Filipino gatherings, you know, it's on a different level. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Manila, Philippines! In October of 2022, we decided to do a stopover in Manila. And she ended up getting sick with a stomach flu. And so what ended up being one week came out to a few weeks. And then all of a sudden, someone was telling us, you guys got to check out BGC if you guys are going to stay this long. So we decided to go to BGC and we're like, holy moly, this exists in the Philippines. This is amazing. So what turned out to be a stopover, we ended up being like, okay, let's make this a trial stay. We were just so welcomed coming here by everybody. I mean, as soon as we stepped at the airport, it's just a whole different vibe in the Philippines. It's so community oriented here. It's like everybody wants to help. Anytime we needed help with anything, people were just always willing to help us. I think there's that quote that goes, it can be imitated, but it can't be duplicated. We traveled to over 100 cities around the world, and there's a lot of beautiful cities out there. But the thing is, what you can't duplicate are the people. So in the Philippines, the Filipino people are just so warm, and the hospitality is on a different level here. So right away you feel a connection, the friendliness, the sense of belonging. I thought it was just like a stopover and then I got sick and it was a blessing in disguise because it felt immediately like home and I loved it. So here we are now and now we're talking about, okay, Philippines most likely will be our forever home. This is where we belong. There's a lot of reasons to like the Philippines, but what's something that's really different from all the other countries that I've been to? I think it's the hotel and resort experiences. When we check in and then when we're getting served for breakfast, it just feels like they're your family, like they're your cuyas and ates. They were just really nice. When I walk my dog downstairs and I need to cross the street, the guards help me cross the street. And even if you don't know them, they treat you like family. And also here coming to the Philippines, you go grocery shopping. It's a whole different experience in terms of the community. You're welcomed by a security guard. They help you get your card. They help you pick out fruit. They ask you what you're going to make. The guy who packs up your groceries, he walks me out, walks me to our condo. And the entire time we're just talking about life. Like he's telling me about his province, his family. He's suggesting things to me we're talking as if we're family and he didn't expect anything in return he was just doing it because he's nice and that's the kind of warm welcome 
that I did not expect when coming here to the Philippines. People that you just meet randomly who just really treat you like family, very close, and they just want to help. Not only do I want to raise our kids, but we're hoping that we get to raise our grandkids here and they get to feel the Filipino culture, the Filipino roots, because it's, it's different. It's different from, you know, anything else you experience out there. In our Filipino culture, the kindness and the respect and the sharing and the love is deep very deep and I, I want our family to feel that and I want their kids to be raised by that. All right. That's so nice. They seem like such a nice family. Like right? I just want to give them a big hug. Yeah, did, did anything resonate with you with what they said, their experiences here? Uh, loads of things. She mentioned something about how Filipinos were really nice and helpful and they expect really nothing in return and they're just being nice when they walk you to different places and stuff. Mm -hmm. When I was in Amsterdam, I met these group of Germans and one of the comments, the guy said, everybody should have a friend like, like you. you. <laughs> yeah, she was, he, was, he was really nice. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like very happy and just supportive of people and just so encouraging and so full of light. And that really touched me. And, and when she said that, I realized, wait, that's not just me. Mm. That's the entirety of the Filipino community. <laughs> when, we, when we hang out, we like building each other up. So that thing that they noticed, I've noticed it too. I guess I've never actually pinpointed it. But then having her call it out and then me realizing that I've experienced it in different parts of the world, mm. I realized, no, that is actually a Filipino quality. Like, it's a right, trait. Right. So yeah. that was one of the things that stood out. Loads of other things stood out, but that was one in particular. Yeah, for me, I love what Nelvin said, that he doesn't just want to raise his kids here, but his grandkids as well. Like, yeah. it, it really feels like this place is going to be their home. Yeah future generations as well. Yeah. And I feel like that's how I feel as well. When Aww. me and my wife, my the producer of the Filipino story, <laughs> are gonna start raising a family. Yeah. Uh, this is where we feel our community is going to be and where we wanna raise our kids. Not because some of our closest friends are here, yeah. but also Also values. because of that, definitely. <laughs> also I because mean, of come that. come on, okay. we are. But also. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that makes 80% of the, no, just kidding. <laughs> but also, you know, the values of Filipino yeah. culture. And yeah. that's what we wanna inculcate into our Oh, kids. another thing that stuck like you just reminded me, um, Nia said that she got sick and being sick in a foreign country is literally the worst thing that could happen. You feel like you're going to die and no one's there to help you and you don't really understand what's going on. But the fact that she was sick and her testimony is I was sick and it felt like home. Mm, I felt yeah. comfortable, I felt safe. I was like, wow, for someone to be a complete foreigner to the Philippines, to live in the Philippines sick, and to feel like you're safe. Like this is the best place to be safe. Yeah, and you're welcomed <laughs> and taken care of. That's, you know, it's all those little things that makes Philippines a great home. All right, so after they shared their story, of course, we had to show them the Filipino Story animated series. And so, you know, they got to hear your voice all six episodes. Oh, bless. <laughs> <laughs> and this is their reaction. Oh wow, I get to see their reaction and I get to react to their reaction. That's cute. Okay, let's do this. That was, I don't know why I'm emotional right now. That was so heartwarming. It was so beautiful. I know. This is good. You guys did a good job. It was so heartwarming and um, to me what I received from this is that no matter where Filipinos are in the world, whether they're in Canada or the UAE or California or here, every Filipino has these deep roots of share, care and love. And so it just hit me when I was watching it because, you know, I didn't grow up that way. But now I'm part of a family who has been Filipino and then now my baby is a Mexicano. And it's crazy because, you know, I grew up not having that home physically or emotionally. But I think that's why now and then I found each other because I found a home in him and in his family and in his Filipino community. So, wow, good job. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. I remember growing up, if something was to happen, let's say in San Fernando of Banga, all of us in the U.S. will gather up and say, okay, we need to collect this much from everyone because we need to help out this family that's struggling right now in our community in the Philippines. And I didn't even know who was struggling, by the way. And now I get it. It's, it's the cultural value of Bayanihan. 
That was great. I love the animation. It just made me feel a lot more pride in being Filipino. It was very beautiful. It was very easy to understand. Like, even if you're not from the Philippines or Filipino, it's very easy to understand. Yeah, the clarity and the simplicity of all the episodes helps with taking actions. There's always a lot of information coming at us everywhere, but it's what we really do with it. So in a lot of it, we don't really do much with it because it's not clear enough and it's not simple enough. And I think these episodes have done a great job in clarifying what Filipino greatness is, clarifying our roots, and then being able to talk about it with the kids is, is gonna be amazing because then they can take actions. They know what we're talking about. Oh, when I saw the mom cry, <laughs> it just came to me. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. How do you feel being part of this oh, wow. big project where we get to tell people, we get to clarify to them who they are? Wow, good job, man. <laughs> good job. <laughs> it was crazy because I saw someone who wasn't Filipino cry mm -hmm. for the story of the Philippines. And I think that really resonated with me because I didn't know what I was getting into when I first agreed to be a part of it. I do my part in a very dark room. Mm -hmm. And when I was reading these things, in my head, I was oh my gosh, why am I crying? <laughs> in my head, I was thinking of who I would be telling these stories to. Mm. And it's hard because you need my voice before you can show it to the world. So it's not like you show it to the world and then I see it and then I get to picture them. So in my head when I read them or when I would read these scripts, I would be like, who am I reading this to? And I would be thinking of kids like her kids yeah. <laughs> or like teenagers probably who are ashamed of where they come from. But to see the imaginations that I have in my head actually come to life, I think that's, I think that's why I'm getting emotional because you see the reality of how like a little voice like mine, a little Filipino voice like mine can actually impact other people's lives and change perspectives and how words like yours can really bless and reach so many people so I don't know it got me emotional just seeing their reaction to it I always get emotional when I see people's <laughs> reactions to it but seeing someone who isn't even Filipino mm -hmm. connect with the Philippines I think this is the start of being able to make great waves in the world of showing people like how amazing the Filipino identity is so yeah thank you for making me a part of it and just you know one of their comments was <sighs> It's such a nice voice. Oh. oh, that's really sweet of them. Thanks for trusting me to everybody in the team. Tony. <laughs> Tony? <laughs> like, He's still alive, there's guys. A <laughs> <laughs> there's a Tony. fight. <laughs> My message took off <laughs> and now landing in like LAX or something. <laughs> Ooh, wow, I didn't think this would be emotional. <laughs> me neither. But it is. Well, we'll make a great team. Yeah. Oh, wow, wait, wait, that's... <laughs> There, there we you go. go. <laughs> That's it. All right, well, if you guys want to see more of Mom Duty or the Ocampo family, yeah. you can go check out their YouTube channel. It's called Mom Duty, and you can watch their adventures around the Philippines. If you guys liked what you see, and if you want to be a part of our adventure in knowing more about the Philippine culture, like, share, comment, and subscribe. It would really mean a lot to us and help us with this project. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, see you.